Let's spend a little bit more time talking about similarity transformations. It's a very important concept, so it's well worth the extra time. So in this video, we'll point out two additional nice properties of similarity transformations, and we'll end up posing a very natural question, which will be very beneficial for you to think about. So to motivate our present discussion, let me ask you the following question. Which one of these three matrices is related to this one by a similarity transformation? In other words, which one of these three matrices could be the matrix A in a relationship like this, so that this one is the matrix B for some invertible matrix X? That would mean that one of these matrices is related to this one by a similarity transformation. So that's the question. And it may or may not be easy, depending on how you think about it. So, of course, it's not about the individual entries. You can stare at the individual entries of these matrices till the cows come home and not know the answer. It's about something a little bit deeper. And, of course, ultimately, it's about the eigenvalues. But calculating the eigenvalues is a little bit... Uh, I wouldn't say it's difficult for a 2 by 2 matrix, but it's a little bit too much for this question. We can use the fact that matrices related by a similarity transformation have identical eigenvalues to come up with slightly simpler criteria to answer this question. For example, we have discovered that the sum of the eigenvalues equals the trace of the matrix. We justified that property for a very broad range of matrices, maybe not for the ones with complex eigenvalues and not for the defective case, but for all other cases, we had a pretty good argument for why that is true. So if any one of these matrices is related to this one by similarity transformation, it must have the same trace. So that's our property number one for this video. Two matrices related by similarity transformation have the same trace. And I think this further justifies the use of the term similarity. After all, they're similar in many ways, including having the same trace. So let's see, the trace of this matrix is 7, just like this one, so this one is still a candidate. The trace of this matrix is also 7, so it's still a candidate. And the trace of this matrix is 8. So this one cannot be related to this matrix by similarity transformation. Different trace, which means different eigenvalues, which means no similarity relationship. So this one's out. And we just used our first additional nice property of similarity transformations. What would be the other one? Well, of course, the determinant. The determinant equals the product of the eigenvalues for all matrices. Actually, we justified that property for all matrices. Not sure about the complex case, but that's not important right now. It's true in all cases. The product of the eigenvalues equals the determinant. That's our second nice property. So let's see whether we can use that criterion to rule out another matrix. So let's see. The determinant of our original matrix is 6 plus 6 is 12. So the determinant of this matrix is negative 8 plus 18 is 10. So that excludes this matrix. And for this matrix, it's 10 plus 2, also 12. So it doesn't rule out this matrix. In fact, this matrix has the same trace and the same determinant as this matrix. So it's a very legitimate candidate. I would even put a check mark next to it. And that brings us to an interesting question. Now that we have discovered that they have the same trace and determinant, can we conclude that they actually are related by similarity transformation? Well, in the general n by n question, in the general n by n case, it's easy to show that that, of course, is not enough because you need to have identical eigenvalues. And having identical trace and identical determinant does not guarantee that all n eigenvalues are the same. However, for a 2 by 2 matrix, it does. If two matrices have identical trace and identical determinant, they have identical characteristic polynomials and therefore have identical eigenvalues. So maybe in this case, it is sufficient to be related by similarity transformation. So once again, the defective case will be a little bit tricky. So let's not think about the defective case for now and leave you with the following question. Suppose you have two matrices with identical eigenvalues and each with n 
linearly independent corresponding eigenvectors. And when I say identical eigenvalues, I also mean identical multiplicities. So if you have two matrices, two three by three matrices, and the eigenvalues of one of them are one, one, and three, the eigenvalues of the other one must also be one, one, and three, and not one, three, and three. So the eigenvalues need to be the same, and multiplicities need to be the same. That I, I would call those matrices as having identical eigenvalues, and they both need to have three, or in general n, linearly independent eigenvectors. Well, is that enough for those two matrices to be related by a similarity transformation? Think about it.